Hello everyone, this is Patrick W. Crawford of MUAC Productions, and what this video is, is a production workflow for one of my photo edits that I did a couple weeks ago. It's for the week of December 29th. Every week I make a new photo edit, and I try creative new ways of creating something or doing something I haven't done before. And this, what I did for this photo edit was um, something they actually used in the film The Lord of the Rings quite a lot. Or effectively, that's what I did. So showing now is the original 2D photo that I started with, which I then turned into this photo here. Basically, what I did in this process was make it so that I could add 3D objects into this photo, essentially, and have it reflect the scene properly so it seemed like it was actually there. As you can see, I also did a number of other things editing-wise, and I completely redid the water, but I'll walk you through the entire process, because it's quite an interesting technique. So, the first thing is I'm going to be using Blender 3D, using the new rendering engine Cycles, which enables you to um, do a lot of really nice reflections and uh, ray tracing, etc. things that make it look quite a bit nicer which is partially why I was inspired to do this edit so that I could utilize that and see how well I can make something you know, fit with a photo. So what I started with was this image. As you see before, it's not that interesting. I actually took a number of photos here. These are all the raw photos I took. This was um, off the coast of uh, Maui. So this is right near the beach. Just looking back at some of the resorts. And I didn't have my tripod at the time, so I was not able to properly do an HDRI image with the different exposure levels. So I just kind of had to hope that the settings I was on were uh, working properly, because I was already holding my family up by uh, taking these photos. But when I got back to the hotel, I noticed that the sky was horribly blown out. And I've tried you know, to fix that before in photos. It doesn't always look so very nice. And so I ended up going with one of the later, the last photo I actually took, which kind of uh, eliminated the sky really at all and focused mostly on the water. And so, the, and so then I decided, okay, now I'll use that to make the photo. So the next step is something I've been doing for a little while now, and that was creating an environment map. There is a wonderful app for the iPhone, and only for the iPhone, unfortunately, called SynthEyes. And what it does is, I actually got this tip from uh, Freddie Wong on one of his uh, behind the scenes videos. They use this for a couple of their things. Um, it allows your iPhone to basically, you move your iPhone around at a scene and using the compass, it is able to map pictures it takes and put it into a sort of 3D sphere. And then you can export that to this image format, which is an environment map. And this you can use in Blender or really any 3D program to sort of see what the view is of this scene from every angle. So the first thing I did was, of course, make that for my image. Unfortunately, it the camera on the iPhone didn't handle, ex handle exposures too well. So you notice that this whole thing here is very dark, and where everything else is completely blown out. And also it missed some black pieces here and there because it didn't completely capture it, right? So I thought, okay, maybe I'll try making an HDRI with this image. And so, well, the problem with that was though, I moved ever so slightly. So if you look between where the railing is, to get a proper HDRI, everything would have to line up perfectly. And since things are bent and distorted as needs to be for an environment map, there's no real easy way to do this. So I kind of gave up on that one and took another one outside our hotel room, which had more of the green scenery, and this is the original um, one I took with um, green, the sort of walk that could kind of look like some of the reflections of the water, the sky, the green on the side. So I thought, okay, this isn't exactly the place that I took the photo, but it'll match pretty, pretty well for the reflections. And so then Photoshop, I, you know, removed some of the bad features of it that weren't working so well when I took the photo. The environment, sorry. So, given I have this end environment map and this photo, I went into Blender to start what is, I can't remember what the official name of it is, but it's um, 
basically what we're going to do is take this 2D photo and turn it into a 3D scene by outlining the geometry. So here all I've done is added it as a background, that image. And so, um, so it's only for the camera view right now, I'm in the camera view. And so basically what I did was, for example, add a plane, move into the center, rotate it a bit, you know, move it and basically change it, change the plane, you know, edit it around so that it matched the geometry of the photo of the river and the sides. So after doing that, I get this. So if I go into wireframe mode here, you see I have the walls here, then this sort of riverbed structure here. So going back to the camera view, you see that it overlaps more or less with the main features and walls of the photo. And so I've also created this ground mesh here, this right here, which is what I use to recreate or create my own um, water for the river. And so then what you do, this is where it gets to be the uh, unique part, is you select everything that you've just outlined and you project it. So you press U, then go to project from view, and then what you get is this. This here, so just so you, don't, you can see what's going on, this is the original photo here. After I've edited it a little bit, this is after I did some, I got rid of some camera distortion and did some other lighting things, which ultimately didn't make that much difference because everything got distorted anyways. But um, So this is a slightly edited version of that original photo, but still essentially the same thing. So you have the mesh here unwrapped onto this photo. And you'll see it's rough, but you can see that along here, like this goes along the wall. This goes along the bottom of the edge of the wall. This is the base of the river. This is the trees up here. So that if I were to go into textured mode here, pressing Alt-Z, you sort of see what the scene looks like. All right, this is something that at first when I did, I was like, what is going on here? Why does it look like this? And it was a bit annoying, but then I realized it does some funny thing. Um, Blender does some funny things when it doesn't have enough polygons to unwrap the texture. It sort of gets distorted halfway through a polygon. So you see, like, you see, there's this like a line through the middle of this one, for example. So I found a way to get around that was adding a subsurf modifier. So I t just and re-enable this, you notice that becomes more or less smooth again. Still you have some weird things going on here, it's not perfect, but I actually had to zoom in a little bit to get to this point, which is what then reminded me of the thing that they used in Lord of the Rings for their filming. So, although this wasn't actually what I used for the edit, I created an animation afterwards. You can see this is outside the camera view of the uh, unwrapped scene. Um, from down here, it looks pretty terrible. Everything's stretched and everything. But from the camera view, it looks more or less all right. This is, you don't see the um, background anymore. This is just the um, scene that we've unwrapped using uh, shadeless, I believe it was. Shadeless texture. And so, what they did in Lord of the Rings for a lot of their um, seemingly helicopter um, flying camera scenes is they unwrapped an image like this into a 3D scene and um, move the camera slightly through it. So you notice, even though I took a 2D photo, I'm able to sort of get this 3D effect going through uh, this camera. So you can go through, you know, the scene like this. Not very far, because again, if you go too far over here, it gets really stretched and everything, and doesn't look very nice. But uh, you can scroll around a little bit, so there could be a nice effect for a short panning scene or adding a little depth to a shot. But effectively, the point of all this was that I now have the scene modeled in 3D so that if I were to put an object in the middle here, it would reflect not only from the environment map, but from something that was actually right there. So the fence and the um, water here, the trees back behind there. This is why it wasn't so important that my environment map that I created um, wasn't the exact scene because the only way it would actually work properly to use only an environment map for a reflective object is if I took it from the point that the object was existing. So unless I had actually gotten to the water and you know moved my iPhone all around over here to get the fence 
exactly there and there and the water there and the sandbar there, it wouldn't have worked anyways. So right now, I guess the only thing the environment map is doing is making sure the reflections off the sky are somewhat similar to what the scene actually would have been. So the next step was to then add my own water. So I added this layer. So here you see it's just um, a normal plane basically, with, which is the same geometry as I created previously with a few, few subdivisions and then a displacement modifier modifier and so that creates a little bit of a just you know bumps to it right now which makes it look more like water and will will bleh, bleh, reflect the uh, sides of the scene and so forth in a way that should match what the original water would have looked like and then of course I've added Suzanne the blender monkey just as a feature object placed in a few places down here and so now um, just to show that I have, I do have the um, that image here. That's the environment map, wherever it is. This one. So that is um, what is the scene all around. And let me just do a quick show. Actually, before I get distracted, this is something that um, I was first annoyed by Blender, or not Blender, but when I um, downloaded Cycles. You see, I've just gone into Render View, and so you can see what the um, environment map looks like. But what I did was, you notice I pressed, um, I keep pressing escape, I pressed um, Alt, Z, and Shift. And so, do it a couple times to make it actually go in, because I was in wireframe mode. What I did to do that was, if you haven't seen this before, it's actually quite useful. It's what, um, you know, the big reason why they redid a lot of things in Blender, was so that you could customize everything. So I've just gone into the user preferences which can go under the file menu. I've gone into input under 3D view. And let's see if I can remember where it is. Um, 3D global general. And I noticed that when I was scrolling down through all these massive numbers of you know, input settings, I saw, oh, Z and Alt Z. Those are the um, controls to go between textured and wireframe and so forth. And so what I did was I opened this one copied this control so that's like basically the Python setting for which mode the um, 3d view is in and I went down here and I added a new one I've already added it here and pasted that code there and it came down to here I copied um, that data value from up here as well space data viewport not shade so that's here and so I've changed put this to be textured and I just typed rendered here and I made it whatever key I want so that now instead of having to go down to this menu to um, do rendered I can just do the shortcut key that I've set myself maybe there was already one I didn't see it plus this is I don't know, about as consistent anyway so I found this just to be most useful so anyways this is getting back on track now the rendered view of my environment map without any objects in it so you can see this is how um, the scene was captured in 3D, basically. You see some distortions here and there, especially at the bottom and top of the scene. Something like, looks like a lily pad or something. I don't know what's going on there. But um, it actually works pretty well. So I guess technically what I should have done, since all I'm getting is really the top, is I should have taken the uh, environment map sideways or something so that this part would be undistorted and this part, which you don't see because of the sides of our scene, would be distorted. But oh well. So... If I now go back to these layers, go back to our camera view, go into texture mode. So now if I were to go into rendered view, it'll uh, take a second because there's a number of subdivisions. Um, we now start to see that the reflections are working as we had hoped. Give it a second to uh, render here. Fortunately, I'm only able to use CPU on this machine as opposed to uh, the GPU rendering, which is really unfortunate. So as you can see, it's reflecting from the sides here along here, and then it's also reflecting the sky up here. Zoom me up. So go into the camera view. Let it render for a second. So you can see it looks pretty nice. So while it takes a while to explain, it's actually a fairly quick -y, uh, event, or a quick thing to put together. You can see it's reflecting the tree here. It's darker on the side where it should be connecting there. 
it all in all looks quite nice. And so just like moving the monkey around, you can see the sky better or not, whatever. So basically it's a quick way to make something more out of a single photo. You can make a short animation out of it. Or you can just add a 3D object in this way and get the reflections properly. Just like zooming in a little bit, for example. And so that's basically what I did to create this photo. Um, after that, I guess I added some flares or some sparkling effects. So I had the original photo somewhere. Yeah, so I did a, a sparkle pass or something. There it is. <laughs> and just overlaid on the original photo to get the final version. So just op open the original photo, and this is the final version, and this is the original photo. And so, um, yeah, it was quite simple. I mean, I guess I didn't say anything about the uh, the uh, texture settings, but um, this the water here was something quite simple. It was just a mixed shader with glossy and glass. The glass is so that it actually does shine through to the um, texture of the bottom here. So it actually does see through a bit of the original, um, you know, the original ripples and a bit of the sandbar as well, although you don't really notice it. And then also, of course, the reflection with mostly um, sharp reflection of everything else. So I hope you found this informative. Again, I thought it was just a unique idea of something more you could use with Blender that maybe isn't completely typical. And I hope you uh, try it out. Thanks for watching. This was Patrick W. Crawford of MUAC Productions.